Hello everybody and welcome back to the ASUS North America YouTube channel. This is JJ once again and we're bringing you guys a brand new performance oriented video. If you guys have recently checked out the YouTube page, you notice that we've put up a brand new featured overview on our new ASUS GeForce GTX 780 DirectSU 2 OC card. If you guys have not checked out that overview, make sure and check it out. It's an awesome beast of a card. Um, as based on kind of our new kind of breakdown and the way that we're handling things, uh, if you want to kind of know more about the non-reference design aspects, kind of the ins and outs in terms of the topology, the feature set, um, the overall kind of specifications of the card, make sure to check out the overview video. In this video specifically, we're going to be covering performance, which includes everything ranging from overclock settings to temperatures to acoustics, as well as gameplay performance. Uh, so we're going to be actually targeting a very high level of gameplay performance this time around. We're going to be looking at 4K uh, based gaming performance with two 780s and SLI. So of course, keep in mind that for you guys that are interested in performance relative to 2560 uh, or QHD based, res uh, QHD based resolutions or even 1080p based resolutions, solutions, uh, the 780 is going to comfortably be able to go ahead and drive performance and image quality settings for both those corresponding resolutions. So with that, let's first go ahead and dive in to cover a little bit about the test bed that we're going to be utilizing for our 4K 780 test bed uh, performance playback, and then from there we'll jump into some gameplay. Okay guys, so we're just going to quickly recap for you our test bed. Um, so of course this is going to be a key aspect in terms of helping us to define uh, kind of not only the segmentation but the performance characteristics of what we're looking at to be able to drive an ultra grade gaming base experience. So first off, in terms of the back, uh, you're not going to see it too much because it's covered up a bit, but we've got our Maximus 6 Hero uh, motherboard. This is an awesome gaming grade motherboard, great for overclocking. It's got some enhanced audio technologies, great power delivery, huge amount of component features. You can check out our review for more information that's based off our Z87 chipset. Of course, we have a fourth generation Core i7 series processor on there as well, and that's being cooled by this awesome high performance heat pipe from Noctua. This is their NHU series. It's a really nice heat sink because it doesn't impact any of uh, the memory that we would have installed, even if we were utilizing four DIMMs. Now, if we move down from there, of course, we're going to see that we've got two GPUs, and these are really the stars of the show right here in terms of helping to drive our 4K grade gaming experience. And these are going to be our brand new full non reference A. ASUS GeForce GTX 780 DirectSU 2 OC based graphics cards. These guys are outright beasts in terms of their, of their gameplay performance ability and we've got two of them set up in SLI here on this Maximus 6 Hero. But we don't want to forget about this guy right here. This is our brand new PQ321Q a monitor. Uh, this is going to be the first to the market in terms of monitor offering 3840 by 2160 base resolution. This is an extraordinary high resolution. So for you guys that are uh, pixel density fiends out there, you guys we literally want the sharpest, the highest resolution based content, whether it's going to be for image editing, general productivity, or of course for high grade gaming based experience, this is going to be the panel to pick. Now just to give you a couple of quick notes here on terms of the testbed configuration, with these uh, ASUS GeForce GTX cards that we have here, we're using a specially released driver from NVIDIA which you can get directly from GeForce.com. Uh, NVIDIA as well as ASUS are closely working to go ahead and make sure they have the optimal gameplay functionality and stability uh, for 4K based resolution support, but keep in mind that not only games but the drivers will continually be fine-tuned to give you guys the best gameplay experience. So make sure to not only have the GeForce Experience software installed to make sure you get automatic patches, but make sure and regularly go back to GeForce.com to make sure you can check on the current status of any updated drivers to improve gameplay, compatibility, and overall performance. Performance. Uh, so with that, we're going to first go ahead and jump into the performance aspects of our ASUS GeForce GTX 780. Okay guys, so uh, giving you a little bit of performance breakdown, we're first going to actually talk about the max ranges for the card. And what we mean by max ranges is some of you guys are interested in terms of what are the maximum settings that are available via our GPU tweak uh, utility to go ahead and be able to customize and tweak and tune the graphics card. So the ranges you're going to see here in the screenshot actually essentially cover everything from the maximum GPU frequency uh, to the voltage to the memory frequency and all the correlating parameters. Um, so you're going to have uh, options to hit and let's say like a maximum uh, GPU frequency of 1882 or the memory frequency going up to 9999 uh, or a power target of 110. Uh, even things like the voltage will be able to go up to 1.2 about 1.213. 1 now keep in mind for the voltage all of your cards are going to have slight variances in terms of the maximum voltage so keep in mind you might not exactly get 1.213 uh, it might vary a little bit by actually going up a little bit or maybe a down by a little bit. Now uh, for you guys that are looking for even higher levels of ranges if you're assuming uh, either to use some form of uh, extreme 
extreme cooling, or you're possibly using something like EK's upcoming full water block design, which is fully compatible with our non-reference GTX 780 based graphics card, there is an option inside of GPU Tweak called Overclocking Range Enhancement, which will further extend the actual ranges uh, for adjustments to not only the uh, GPU frequency, um, but to the memory frequency. It will not modify GPU voltages. For you guys that are looking for more aggressive voltages, the only option available to you outside of the default parameters that are available will be through our VGA Hotwire technology, and if you're utilizing a corresponding ROG series motherboard, which features that same function uh, or feature. Uh, so with that, next option is going to be relative to the temperatures. Uh, temperature is always a key aspect of interest for you guys. In terms of the idle temperature performance, the card is outstanding. In most situations, you're going to be looking at somewhere between about 27 to about 30 C in terms of idle operation, and that's actually going to probably be comfortably running there for general things like um, web browsing, email, and general productivity work. It's only once you start to get into partial uh, heavier compute based workloads uh, or uh, full uh, accelerated based workloads, so like watching, let's say, like a, um, a video file, uh, a Blu-ray, a DVD, or of course jumping into a game that you're going to increase the actual temperatures. Now even under full gameplay performance, uh, so we did all our actual test settings at 2560 uh, by 1440, and you can see these actual corresponding settings that we have here uh, that we use for, for Unigen in terms of the Unigen 4.0 benchmark to give a baseline in terms of consistent looping for approximately an hour uh, in our testbed configuration to allow us to go ahead and monitor all the corresponding uh, metrics that we're reporting to you. And under those situations, depending on the GPU, because there's always a little bit of variance between GPU to GPU, uh, you're going to be looking at a load temperature of generally between about 62 to about 66 C. So the card is really, really cool. Uh, when you consider that, that the, the reference base design is pretty much consistently hitting 80 C, this is significantly cool. It's significantly quieter, and then when you take into consideration the full non-reference design, an outstanding base card. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other performance metrics for this card as well. Okay guys, so now that we've covered a bit relative to the actual temperatures, next most important part is definitely acoustics. I know for a lot of you guys out there, you're always interested in knowing for a high-end GPU like this, it's awesome that it uh, has an ultra high level of cooling, but it's just important that also you're getting an outstanding acoustic experience. So our goal definitely with the DirectSU series of cards is not an ultra cool, but ultra quiet operation. And definitely even though this is an ultra high performance card that is not only faster and cooler than the reference design, it's also up to three times quieter. And now when we're taking a look at the stock base configuration, which keep in mind already comes with a moderate overclock on top of the baseline uh, frequency that you have on a GTX 780 base graphics card. Uh, your fan duty cycle uh, is only going to approximately be about 54%. Uh, so when you think about that, that's actually fairly conservative that you have a huge amount of additional headroom still left in the card in terms of increasing the cooling performance, which is quite impressive. When you correlate that next over to the actual fan RPM base values, uh, it's very conservative. Overall, you're looking at about an average of 1600 uh, to about maybe six. 1630 in terms of the, the RPM uh, for gaming load. So overall those fans, uh, the two DC2 fan, dustproof fans that we have on the GTX 780 card are running at a very moderate based RPM. They have a good level of tonality and like I said they're also essentially almost near silent in terms of overall operation. Now in an SLA based configuration you're still going to have a very good acoustic based signature. Uh, of course it's going to be a little bit louder but overall uh, in terms of a single card based configuration very quiet, very cool. Um, now if we take also a look in consideration our power target, keep in mind that the power target is a key metric at being able to kind of look at the total available kind of dynamic uh, power requirement that the card is utilizing at one time under load, and that can affect uh, the overclockability of the card um, because that works in conjunction with the GPU Boost 2.0 technology, which is also referencing our temperatures. So the lower that we can keep the power target and the cooler that we can keep the card, the higher our GPU Boost clock speed, and that ultimately give you guys uh, better performance, lower frame latency, and overall better gaming experience. Uh, when we take a look at the overall power target configuration, it's very low. Um, uh, you're going to be looking at generally between about 84 to about 90 percent. Um, so that's still going to be underneath 100 percent marker, leaving you some additional room so that when we go ahead and overclock the card, you've got an additional amount of headroom. Now rounding out the actual frequencies for the card, frequencies under the card under full gaming load are going to be approximately about 1032. So that's going to be a quite healthy bump 
on top of the actual frequency that you're going to have of the GTX 780, as well as even compared to the reference-based design because of its cooler running operation. Now, for you guys that are interested in overclocking, uh, before we jump into actually the overclocking settings that we would recommend for you to guys try it on your card, we're going to give you a couple of baselines. Uh, even when you add the actual card overclocked to a GPU frequency, GPU boost frequency of 1100 megahertz, so 1.1 gigahertz, and 6.6 .6 gigahertz on the memory, uh, we only moderately increased the fan duty and the actual uh, temperature. So overall, we still maintained a very cool and quiet card. Our fan duty cycle went up to approximately 57% uh, versus 54. Um, our fan RPM data went up just a little bit over about 1700 RPM, about 1700 to about 1750 in terms of the RPM value, still very conservative. Uh, but our um, overall GPU boost frequency increased considerably. We overall were hitting close to uh, almost 1.2 gigahertz. So we had 1.188, uh, so 1188 in terms of the overall GPU boost frequency underneath gaming load with that GPU's value, uh, GPU boost value of 1.1 gigahertz. So overall a nice uptick due to the quiet and cool operation of the card. And in terms of the overall temperature performance, uh, the card was still uh, generally underneath 70 C. So usually going to be targeting somewhere between about 66 to about 70 C in terms of the actual performance for the card when overclock and under load. So lastly, we're going to take a look here at the settings that we have for our actual overclock. And it's going to be very simple. You're just going to open up GPU tweak. You're going to go into the GPU frequency or the GPU boost value. Go ahead and dial in uh, 1.1 gigahertz. And then from there on the memory, 6.6. .6. In our testing, we found that the majority of uh, GPUs are going to be comfortable running at this range. If you want to start off with something a little bit more conservative, you can drop each corresponding value by about 50 megahertz and then go ahead and go up in increments of either 10 to 25 megahertz. Entirely up to you, um, but that's going to go ahead and give you even faster gameplay performance. So with that, let's go ahead and now actually jump into showing you some of the performance that you can have on two ASUS GeForce GTX 780 uh, graphics cards when paired up in SLI and running at uh, 4K base resolution. Okay guys, so the first game that we're going to go ahead and jump into here is going to be Battlefield 3. Uh, and here you guys can see just a quick screenshot of the settings that we've gone ahead and utilized in game. We're pretty much running everything at the highest level presets. Uh, keep in mind that we are utilizing a uh, beta driver supplied to us by NVIDIA specifically designed for 4K. Um, so of course, performance, functionality, and compatibility is going to continue to improve not only for this, but for all the other game titles that are out there on the market. So just keep that in mind. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into the game and show you a little bit of Battlefield 3 uh, running at native resolution. So right off the bat, you can already see that uh, we're getting excellent scaling performance. That shows you that NVIDIA has done a great job in terms of working uh, to go ahead and optimize the architecture and on the software side uh, for the game to go ahead and give us great scaling with these two GeForce cards. You can see right now we're consistently hitting over about 70 frames a second, even with all these settings maxed out. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump into a little bit of the gameplay here. And we can even see that as we go ahead and change the environment, mapping, we're still keeping great frame rate, green policy, and even in various levels that we've gone ahead and tried out, uh, we've gone ahead and had maintained really solid actually performance uh, in different types of environments. Now, of course, in multi multiplayer gameplay, you're going to have varying levels of performance because, of course, you are bringing in more balancing uh, from the CPU. Uh, so, of course, in online multiplayer, expect the, the frame rate to take a little bit more of an impact because, um, of course, the number of units that are going to be on screen as well as the diversity of the AI that's being brought about. But overall, uh, very strong gameplay performance. You can see that we haven't really almost dropped below 60 frames a second. So overall having a very smooth level of gameplay here in Battlefield 3. Okay guys, so next up we're going to be taking a look, a look at Grid 2 and pretty much the end. We've maxed out pretty much all the settings here on the game so you can take a look at these here in the screenshot of the gameplay settings. And once again, we're running this at the native resolution. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, jump into a little bit of Grid 2. So you can see, of course, there we have our FPS in the corner. We already started off between about 90 to 100 plus frames a second. Frame latency is really smooth overall. Uh, it's a really nice and responsive experience, which is great for uh, a racing title like this. And uh, of course, even with keeping everything maxed out at this high resolution, 
really smooth level of gameplay even when factoring that we're running all the advanced image quality settings in the game. Yeah, there we go. Right here. You can see right here that even as we continue to go through the rest of the track, very similar level of performance offered consistently throughout the entire uh, essentially track. So we were looking at consistently over uh, 90 frames uh, with it not being a surprise to be able to go ahead and have it be in excess of 100 frames a second. So overall that gives you a little bit of the performance offered here on Greed 2. Uh, but definitely very solid uh, running here at 4K resolution. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into our next game, which is going to be Trine 2. Okay guys, next up here we've got Trine 2, an awesome indie platformer title with just an amazing um, actually graphics engine which takes advantage of a huge amount of specialized features, whether uh, it's specialized physics-based processing, a lot of specialized uh, shadow and lighting technology, a really awesome game that visually has got a great look and feel. And uh, we've gone ahead and set it to pretty much maximum gameplay settings and even at this high resolution we're also running a two times anti-aliasing pattern that you'll be able to see here in terms of the gameplay settings. So with that, let's go ahead and jump a little bit here into the gameplay environment take a look at it there you can see some of the awesome lighting effects just real time happening in game and uh, let me go ahead and see if I can get my guy here and bust through this area get into the game environment intruders do you think we'll have to fight them get your pocket stick and here you can see some awesome depth of field some bokeh based effects as well and it's overall it's really got a, a great vibe in terms of the look and the feel You can see that the frame rate is holding very steady. We're looking at about uh, 80 plus frames overall uh, and overall keeping a really smooth level of gameplay. So it's so overall keeping the experience really smooth, really responsive, which is exactly what we would want, especially with a, a platformer where you're, you're moving from point to point and you don't want it to feel uh, laggy and you don't want to have a kind of any, any noticeable elements that are going to detract from your overall gameplay experience. All right, guys, so I guess that wraps up a little bit of trying to here. So from there, let's go ahead and, and jump into our next title. Okay, guys, so next up here, we've got The Witcher 2. It's an awesome game. I really love it. The uh, graphics engine is one of the best engines on the market in terms of taking advantage of all the uh, hardware that we're utilizing here and just looks gorgeous here at this ultra high resolution. So we've gone ahead and set everything pretty much to its maximum settings. You can take a look at here in terms of the settings. We don't have Uber sampling enabled just because we want to be able to maintain an ultra high level of uh, consistency in terms of the frame rate. And we don't want any unexpected drops, especially because we have gone ahead and utilized the latest nice mod, uh, which goes ahead and incorporates a more advanced level of uh, animations to Geralt's fighting movements. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and jump into the arena here and uh, take a little bit look at the gameplay experience. You can see right off the bat that we have a, a very smooth level of performance. We haven't dropped below 50 frames a second yet. Uh, he's got me there. Let's see if I can get this guy. There we go. And even with those really smooth movements, you can see in a, a lot of uh, dimension in terms of movement of the camera and me moving around here, we're still keeping a really robust level of gameplay performance. So uh, that gives you a little bit of perspective there in terms of The Witcher 2 and overall a uh, very nice level of gameplay performance. You can see that overall the frame rate was pretty consistent at giving us between about uh, 45 to about uh, 60 frames depending on where we are at. And keep in mind even in the actual campaign uh, I've noticed that the frame rate stays pretty similar to that even once we have a huge amount of enemies on screen. We've got more foliage, more density and we're experiencing a lot of the open world environments. So overall really great performance. So with that let's go ahead and wrap things up for you guys. Okay guys, so wrapping things up for you, uh, we've given you a little bit of information on all aspects of performance for this actual brand new ASUS GeForce GTX 780 DirectX 2 graphics card. We covered, of course, temperatures, ultra cool in terms of the overall temperatures, generally going to be between, you know, 62 to 66C, even overclocked you're looking under 70C. Moving on to acoustics, we covered, of course, that the fan duty cycles and the overall operation was near silent in terms of the overall acoustic footprint, so maintaining that DC2 trademark of being ultra cool and ultra 
ultra quiet. And then in terms of the gameplay performance, you could see that even uh, when we're driving a ultra high resolution as what we have here on the PQ321Q at 4K and taking a look at some of the most demanding game titles out there on the market, we kept an outstanding of gameplay performance uh, when we had two GTX 780s paired up here in SLI. Uh, so as always, if you guys have any questions, comments, feedback, uh, we'd love to see them here on the page. Feel free to go ahead and drop them, of course, in the comments section. You can also make sure to hit us up on the YouTube inbox, or you can feel free to head over to our North American Facebook page or Twitter pages and leave us some feedback there. Uh, you know, we're still developing this format, and so if you have any feedback specific to what you saw here, uh, including if you actually liked all the topics that we broke down for you here in the performance, please make sure and let us know. So as always, if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure and like it, thumbs up, as well as subscribe, and keep it locked for more content. So as always, thank you for watching.